Welcome back to a multidimensional approach to meet 21st century retailing education and industry challenges for India and the United States. This module will address the triple bottom line. Specifically, it will address understanding triple bottom line strategies for small business owners. It is narrated by Danielle Sponder Testa. The module learning objectives include introduction to the triple bottom line, also referred to as TBL, differences between entrepreneurship and sustainable entrepreneurship, TBL and sustainable reporting, TBL scoring framework, which will also be illustrated, corporate examples of the triple bottom line, and small business examples of the triple bottom line. The triple bottom line is a concept that was coined by John Elkington in 1994. There are three main values in creating the triple bottom line, which include economic prosperity, environmental quality, and social justice. The triple bottom line has been further developed into the 3P formulation, which consists of people, planet, and profits. To further understand the triple bottom line and the 3 Ps, we would like you to watch a short video. The link to that video is available on the next screen and also in the downloadable PDF file that is available on our website. Watch the video at the bottom of the triple bottom line page on our website to learn more. This video is titled, What is Sustainability and the Triple Bottom Line? It can also be found on the YouTube link provided at the bottom of the screen here. Here you can see the triple bottom line triad. Along one side, we have the line of equity, which refers to social justice. On another side, we have ecology, which refers to environment and environmental well-being. On the final side, we have economy, which refers to firms' profitability and financial well-being. Let's start on the first side of the pyramid with equity. Equity refers to social well-being. Among the three Ps of people, planet, and profit, this refers to people. When considering equity in the triple bottom line, questions to ask include, how can we meet fundamental human needs? How may we do business without diminishing equity? Along the second side of our pyramid, we address ecology. When first looking at ecology, a business addresses environmental well-being by answering the question, are we obeying nature's laws? The economic aspect of the triple bottom line is the final side of the pyramid. This refers to economic well-being, and it refers to a business's financial state. A business can evaluate their economic well-being by asking the questions, can I make a profit, and how much? Each of these elements of the triple bottom line, equity, ecology, and economy, or as they are also known, people, planet, and profit, have intersections. With each of these modes represent some blinders, but it's important not to neglect important issues in one area while focusing on another. Now we're going to take a moment to look at how these three elements of the triple bottom line intersect. When we look at the corner of ecology and equity, we're seeing where the environment meets people. So questions to ask when we're looking at the corner of ecology and equity include, are we exposing workers or customers to toxins in the workplace or in consumed products? How is this product design going to affect the health of future generations? On the corner of equity and economy, we are looking at the intersection of people and profit. So questions to ask at this stage are, are men and women being paid equally? And how well do we pay in comparison to a living wage? How does this affect our retail price point? On the corner of economy and ecology, we must review the comparison of financial well-being and profitability in comparison with environment and environmental well-being. Questions to ask at this point are, is our ecological strategy affordable and long-term? Will we diminish our ability to access resources in the future with our actions today? Is not having an ecological strategy going to have economic consequences later on? Now that you understand the triple bottom line and the three P's that play a role in the triple bottom line, let's look at the difference between entrepreneurship and sustainable entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is a process of identifying, evaluating, and pursuing opportunities through creativity, innovation, and transformation to produce new products, processes, and values that are beneficial to the consumer marketplace. In contrast, sustainable entrepreneurship 
is a process in which entrepreneurs exploit the opportunities in an innovative manner for economic gains, societal equity, environmental quality, and cultural preservation on an equal footing. This is the revised triple bottom line model for sustainable entrepreneurship proposed by Majed and Co. in 2012. As you can see, economic, social, and ecological well-being are key elements of sustainability, but a fourth element has been ha added that considers culture and the cultural aspect in a sustainable context. The triple bottom line has been used as a tool or a device for sustainable reporting. Due to its ease in monitoring the effects of business activities on the three dimensions of the triple bottom line. As Elkington stated in 1997, at its narrowest, the term triple bottom line is used as a framework for measuring and reporting corporate performance against economic, social, and environmental parameters. Triple bottom line reporting, or TBLR, reflects a corporation's greater transparency and accountability in its public reporting, communication, and disclosure with regard to how the corporate entity performs in its environmental, social, and economic dimensions. Globally, there is increasing mandatory need for social auditing and corporate reporting on triple bottom line. Questions exist, though, on how to measure triple bottom line performance of an organization. Suggestions on triple bottom line scoring framework and measures could be adopted. On the following screens, we will explore some of the scoring framework. Using Multi-Criterion Decision Analysis, or MCDA, to measure the performance of a factor or variable is an option for the scoring framework. For example, purchase of a car may depend on various criteria like price, maintenance cost, technology, or user interface, fuel mileage, emission rate, and so on. These criteria are measured in different ways. Each triple bottom line goal has performance areas, outcomes that help achieve the goal. Each performance area has measures or items that help deliver those outcomes. An item can be measured using various scales, like a scale of negative 3 to positive 3, 0 to 100, 0 to 10, a Likert scale, or so on. After the scoring, all the scores can be normalized or standardized on a scale of 0 to 100. Here are some economic measures that could be considered within the scoring framework. Performance areas could include quality jobs, reporting and transparency, product focus, or a marketing focus. Within each of these performance areas, specific output could exist. Take a moment to review these performance areas and subsequent measure opportunities. Environmental measures would also exist within the scoring framework of the triple bottom line. Performance areas may include eco-efficiency, green design and construction, and green operations. Some areas you may already be familiar with on a scoring framework of environmental measures include LED design. Within each of these performance areas, as with the previous page, we look at specific measures such as energy use, water use, solid wastage, and emissions. Additional opportunities of measurement also exist. Take a moment to review these performance areas and their measures. Of course, additional areas of performance and measure also may exist. The final construct of the triple bottom line scoring framework would be social measures. Key areas of performance within the social measures may include employment, placemaking and accessibility, and community. Measures for things such as employment may include employee diversity, working flexibility, and job security. Measures of community may include toxic exposure, fair trade, CSR initiatives, and support of local suppliers. Of course, as with previous constructs, additional performance areas and measures may exist. Let's consider some businesses that operate using triple bottom line reporting. Marks & Spencer is a UK-based clothing and general merchandise retailer. For those of you based in the US who may be unfamiliar, they could be compared to a US Target store. While they're not exactly like a Target store, this is a point of comparison. Marks & Spencer has a plan called Plan A that covers two of the three components of the triple bottom line. Then they have a general financial target that covers a third economic component of the triple bottom line. Plan A, as Marks & Spencer puts it, is our way to help protect the planet by sourcing responsibly, reducing waste, and helping communities. We launched Plan A in January 2007, setting our 100 commitments to achieve in five years. 
We've now introduced Plan A 2020, which consists of 100 new revised and existing commitments with the ultimate goal of becoming the world's most sustainable major retailer. Plan A consists of ethical and environmental goals. The campaign entitled Look Behind the Label to publicize their environmentally friendly products further publicized their environmental efforts. Patagonia is another retailer who has focused on performance according to the triple bottom line. Patagonia's mission is to build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, and use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. The brand has a concept called Warnware that mends damaged worn clothing. The brand also pledges at least 1% of sales, or 10% of pre-tax profits, whichever is greater, to environmental groups. IKEA, the Swedish furniture and home fashion accessories company, also has sustainability on their mind. IKEA has several sustainable initiatives. First of all, all wood must come from managed forest. By 2020, the company aims to be 100% renewable, producing as much renewable energy as consumed by using renewable sources such as wind and sun. They also aim to have stores located near major transit access to limit the use of personal transportation such as cars. The Home Depot is another furniture and home accessories company looking to increase their actions towards sustainability. The Home Depot has green team captains in each store. This is an individual responsible for implementing sustainability plans. They also have an eco options program, which allows customers to understand the most environmentally friendly option available to them. They have sustainable products such as solar panels and LED lights. They also take back customers' old, energy-intensive products and allow them to receive a discount on their new items, such as LED Christmas lights. Triple bottom line varies from large to small businesses. Small businesses have a limited financial budget, are sensitive to competition, seek employee workers that have transferable skill sets, and the owner-manager is the sole risk-taker and key decision-maker in most instances. Therefore, incorporating sustainable practices may seem challenging and not always feasible for small businesses. However, many of these risks are similar to those of large businesses. Some small businesses are started with specific triple bottom line, environmental, or ethical well-being initiatives in mind. For instance, The Honest Company, which was co-founded by actress Jessica Alba, was founded in order to sell non-toxic diapers and other baby products. The Honest Company creates products that are environmentally friendly. To do this, suppliers have to comply with their human rights and environmental standards. Further, The Honest Company donates a portion of their sales to Baby to Baby, which provides necessary baby products to inner city families. Triple bottom line reporting is still in its infancy in India. It is an ever-evolving stage. Sustainability reporting is gaining momentum as government has become increasingly proactive in addressing enforcement and many companies have started to publish sustainability reports. There is still a lack of objective and informative reporting though. The CSR guidelines introduced by the Indian government require highlights of CSR initiatives to be included in annual reports of companies. The Securities and Exchange Board of India, or the SEBI, announced a requirement for the top 500 companies listed on the Indian Stock Exchange to include business responsibility reporting in their annual reports. As you can see here, in recent years, India has shown a significant growth in the number of companies that engage in sustainability reporting as per the Global Reporting Index GRI, standards. India still faces many major sustainability challenges. India, being the second largest populated country in the world, has issues of unemployment, poverty, and so on. The presence of a large number of factories for manufacturing makes India one of the leading carbon emission countries in the world. Further, water shortages lead to drought in various regions of the country, which affect crop yields, availability of water for domestic use, and so on. The presence of child labor, i.e. significant percent of children aged 5 to 14 engaging in economic activities, is also an issue. Poverty is an issue as well, with significant percent of the population of India earning less than $2 a day. Issues of access to, uh, to clean water, sanitation, and electricity to the lower class is also a concern. Disparity of wealth distribution among the population exists, and sweatshops in which most of the factories with poor organizational standards exist.
Energy demand is projected to increase by 57% over the next 25 years, and most of the demand will come from India and China. Much of this demand will be met with energy from coal-fired and oil-fired generators. This will result in greater emissions of CO2. There are also drivers of sustainability in India, though. These include globalization and the intense media attention and scrutiny on CSR initiatives. There is also increasing pressure from NGOs and increasing awareness and preference among the people on eco-friendly products, the awareness of climate change and business ethics, as well as other sustainable initiatives. Large, family-owned companies have a history of corporate social responsibility, primarily in the area of social capital and more specifically in primary education, poverty, and malnutrition. Historically, several companies like Tata, Brilla, and Godrig have invested in community welfare by building hospitals, temples, and schools. Unilever India and Infosys are involved in tackling malnutrition. ITC is making technology available to farmers for making better informed decisions on buying, selling, and harvesting. Recently, the focus on alternative fuels such as ethanol blended petrol, biodiesel, and hydrogen and hydrogen CNG mixture, undertaking afforestation programs, mine reclamation, and so on. While there is much left to do regarding sustainability, both companies and countries are making significant strides to make improvements in sustainable processes. Thank you for taking time to learn about sustainability and the trouble bottom line in the United States and India. We hope you will take a minute to consider how these principles may apply to your business and what environmental, ethical, and economic goals you have set for your business.